An espresso can give us all a lift in the morning, and Ross is with a family in Oakland with a special story that can perk us all up. I'm here in Oakland and hope to perk up your morning with the story of Mr. Espresso. Established in 1978, this family-run business stays true to its Italian roots. Let's go check it out. Wow, this is amazing. I am in the museum room here at Mr. Espresso headquarters, and joining us today is Luigi. So this is a family-run business. Tell us the story of Mr. Espresso. Yeah, we are a family-run business. My father, uh, Carlo Di Rocco, is originally from Salerno, Italy, in the south of Italy. Um, he moved here with my mother in the mid-70s. She's originally from France and Normandy. Um, together, they came here with my older brother and sister. Uh, my father was an elevator technician by trade, and uh, being that he was an Italian immigrant and, and could not find good espresso here in the United States, uh, he decided that he wanted to do something about it. So uh, he started to import espresso machines from Italy, uh, one by one, into his garage where I was, uh, the first house that I actually uh, lived in, he was importing machines there and uh, setting them up in the garage and testing them and so on. Started to sell them to local restaurants and cafes, and soon after that started to work out for him, he started to roast coffee and sell it to the same clients. So over the years, uh, the business grew from that foundation. Cool beans. Well, should we go take a tour? Yeah, absolutely. I'll follow you. So how many family members actually work here? Uh, well, there's six of us total. There's my mother and my father, uh, my older brother and sister, and my brother-in-law, Alex, uh, who married, who's married to my sister. Um, and so there's quite a few of us. <laughs> there's my father right there, actually, Mr. Espresso himself. Hey! This is uh, our new roaster that we just purchased from Italy. Oh, wow. Uh, our existing roaster is over 25 years old, and it still works fine, but th there is a time when we eventually need to replace it, so this is the one that just came in a few weeks ago. And I couldn't help but notice these huge stacks of wood, and you guys are known for being unique in that way that you roast with actual wood, right? Right. Well, my father started roasting coffee in this country. Um, he coincidentally had learned to roast coffee already growing up in Salerno, Italy and at that roastery in his hometown, they used wood. Mm. So when he started to roast coffee here, he knew that nobody in the United States was using wood at the time. So he decided he'd be the first coffee roaster uh, to use wood as a fuel source to roast all the coffee with. So to this day, we still roast all of our coffee over an oak wood fire. What is the distinctive flavor that one gets with that type of, of roasting? It does not actually taste like wood smoke or anything like that. It's not a part of flavor of smoke. Um, it is a slower roast, a more humid roast that creates a coffee that's lower in acidity, fuller bodied, and sweeter. <laughs> so rich. This is the roasting room where all the magic happens. Right. Tell us right. about this operation. Right. Well, this is the roasting and production area. As you can see behind me, we have the roaster. Back there in the background is the actual wood that we talked about a moment ago. And over here to the side, we have green coffee that's waiting to be roasted. Uh, Ricardo here is our, our head roaster. He's been roasting for us for over 25 years. Really important to have a roaster with a lot of experience. When you're roasting with wood, it's a very difficult process to control. From there, the coffee gets moved forward into production and then packaging. And so, coincidentally, there's my mom right over here. Hey, mom. She's standing in front of the packaging machine. So the coffee comes out. It's a form, fill, and seal machine. Uh, our packaging is loaded onto the back. Coffee is weighed and filled into the bags, and then it's uh, sealed and it comes off that conveyor right there and then it ships to our customers. Luigi, we're in the showroom. Again, smells so good in here. I know your sister and brother in law are here. Hi, guys. So I'm curious working at Mr. Espresso, I mean, how many cups of coffee are you drinking a day? 
Personally, I have about three to six shots a day, uh, depending on how I'm feeling that day, obviously. But uh, uh, these are single shots of espresso. They're not like full cups. Quality assurance on the coffee that's being roasted here. I mean, is there one designated family member tasting and making sure it's all getting the right notes? Yeah, my older brother, John, who, uh, who learned all about how, how to roast and, and oh, thank you. quality from my father, uh, he's in charge of our green coffee buying, oversees all of our roasting and production. Um, he works up in the lab upstairs, and him and his quality assurance assistant both work together, and basically this tastes a lot of coffee. non-expert at-home baristas, do you have any tips for us to make some great coffee? I would say you know, use good quality coffee, uh, good quality equipment, good quality water, and just, you know, be mindful and try and be careful uh, and produce a good cup of coffee, and that'll get you there more often than not. Wow, well, thank you so much for having us in today. I appreciate it, Luigi. Thanks for coming in. Before you leave, I, I got a bag of beans right here for you. All right. The most popular Amazing. blend. With Mr. Espresso himself That's on the Mr. cover Espresso here. Mr. Espresso himself on the bag, yeah. Right on. Thanks, Luigi. Thank you very much.